to begin this tutorial, we're going to look at going actually into um, the form. So there's two versions. First, the form that you actually fill out and um, that the students do. Um, and then there's the spreadsheet that the form goes to uh, where it automatically fills in data. So we're going to look at this um, spreadsheet, which is called the employee status form. Um, and in there, we can see this dashboard. After it's loaded, you can see um, what yesterday's workload was for each of the team members, how much time uh, each of the team members have worked this week, um, what our course poll is for the week. Um, this is a pie chart, and this here will be um, hourly. So we can see that uh, CIT 220 is taking close to 15 hours so far, and that um, looks like it would be nursing is just over 16 hours. <clears throat> and this over here is the course poll for the semester in, a to in total. And so you can see that ART 235 has taken about 22% of our total time. Um, so we have two tasks that need to be done, one on a weekly basis and the other on a daily basis. Let's look, take a look at the daily task first. Over here we see the data um, for our workload, which is uh, represented here by these gauges. What we have to do is manually go in and input the workload and whether they need tasks or not. Um, so to do that, we go into this tab and we can see the data that came in yesterday highlighted here. So the workload for each individual and what they say they need as far as tasks for the next day. So we can see that everybody said that they're doing fine, that they don't need any more direction for tomorrow, um, but the numbers are different for each individual as far as their workload. So we have to go in and bounce back and forth, putting in the numbers uh, here for Lindsay a five, Josh a five, Jennifer a four, Jake five, and Brennan three. And as those numbers get updated, they will automatically um, get published to these gauges on the left. So you need to do that um, for each day. And you can find the data on the form data tab. And you'll want to find the most recent date, which will always be at the bottom of this uh, spreadsheet here. So we can see that Lindsay, while we were talking, just clocked out. Um, and that for today, she put down that she had five as a workload and two for the um, her whether she needs things or not to do tomorrow. And two meaning that she's she's good. She has plenty of tasks. And, and so you can see that was two twenty one thirteen, where these are all two twenty thirteen. The next next task is our weekly task. And that's how we fix or re-update the time worked this week and the course poll this week. To do that, there's a couple of steps. First, we need to go to Form Data Copied. In that tab, you can see all of the submissions we've had on the form for this week. And so you'll highlight each of those rows and you will copy them. Once you've copied them, you go to the History tab, and here's all the history that we've had so far for each of the submissions on the form. So far, 117. We then paste, but you can't paste a normal paste. You have to do a paste special values only. That way it doesn't bring over all of the formulas and equations that we have. Once you've pasted that, you can now go into Form Data, select all of these rows, 
right click, delete rows 2 through 12. That will then clear all of the data and our dashboard will be blank for time work this week and course poll this week. However, yesterday's workload will remain and course poll this semester will remain the same. Something else that will be beneficial to know is how to update the schedule. So each semester someone will need to come in and update the schedule. It's pretty simple and self-explanatory, um, but you fill in the cells there in 15 minute increments, which can sometimes be confusing, um, but helps us get down to the, the quarter hour as far as when will someone be here and when will they leave. Go ahead and um, decide, uh, for example, if I'm not going to work in the mornings, I'd rather work um, for a break that I have after class in the afternoons. I can just copy that and paste it down here um, and, and just fill in each cell. Once I've done that, I can go down to the bottom and this is where I record the total amount of time w that I plan to work on that given day. So here on Monday, you can see that Brennan plans to work eight hours. I'll work five and a half. Um, we have Jennifer working four, Josh working four, and Lindsay working four. These numbers are all added together and then come to here where we can see a total that Brennan's planning on working 40 hours a week. I work 20. Jennifer 20, Josh 20, and Lindsay 16.25. And so this can be updated or tweaked to whatever you um, think is necessary. Another important task that will need to be performed each semester is updating the, s the course time sheet. This is where we gather all the data from the form for course time. The total time is collected from the History tab. It gathers all of the time for Nursing 450, for Art 230. For each of the courses, it pulls all that and sums it together and collects it into the total time. So here we can see that Nursing 450 has um, taken 133.25 hours of our team's efforts and that ART 230 has taken 85.75 hours of our team's efforts. So a great way to update this each semester will be to take a new tab and title it by the semester name. So instead of this form, this tab being called history we would change it to uh, winter 2013 and for next semester we would make one that was titled spring 2013 and instead of copying our data from the form data copied to history we would copy it to, f to winter 2013 and we'd have to adjust the equation here so instead of it saying sum if history it would be spring 2013 and spring 2013 the time worked this week these three times and the total for this week should work the same they will gather all the data from form data co uh, form data copied so that will not need to be updated. Anytime there is a new employee, student employee, added or removed from the course or from our team, what we'll need to do is go up to Form, Edit Form. In this drop-down menu up here, you'll see each person on our team. Click on the pencil icon to edit. From here, you can add or subtract anyone 
that you don't feel is, should be on the team. I think Brennan should be on the team, so I'll leave him. Um, we'll also need to do this as we begin working on new courses. For example, soon we won't be needing to work on ART 230. It's in pilot this semester, and so in theory, next semester we shouldn't have to work on it. So we can cross that out. Um, we may also want to add new courses, at which point you would click here and add B450 or whatever the course title happens to be. And you need to repeat that through each of these three drop down menus. <clears throat> you will notice that we have another tab called student time and to go along with the form this will be important to know that we have to have each of the students names here and they have to match exactly as it does in the form when they fill it out from the drop down menu to select their name the equations are based off of the exact spelling found on the form submission so if we put Brennan with a lowercase b our equations to tell us in the dashboard how many hours have been worked this week Brennan would not would not show up as we get new employees or employees leave you need to update this form or this spreadsheet so that you can uh, include new employees so if I was to leave and someone named Mike was to replace me you would do that and then the spreadsheet would automatically be updated because it bases it not off of the word Mike but it pulls it from cell A3 so it has to match cell A3 in order to work 